understand about these other battalions. So, because you know what I'm trying to understand is that how can we protect this huge military machinery with out having any control system and you mentioned the control system that was set up by MPFL was this inspector general position where oh, no, 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 deal no. with the criminals no, and people no, who no. went against uh, international law and did things outside of the mandate of the MPFL right but yet no, you couldn't no. function because everybody was directly reporting direct to the boss man the people so, have limitation I have I, even with these names I just call the numbers of people there's some belonging to uh, Tellery to Marine, I have no right to arrest, even to question them, okay. because they are reporting the directly to okay. the to the commander in chief. So, in essence, I understand that your position was like a figurehead position, where they didn't really expect you to do much, but yeah, they just when gave the you people, the power. Yeah, when people in car and going to other places, and I have to check to inspect the car, give me a pass. While you are going to this other control area, right. when you do not have a pass, All but right. I, I was not making major decision planning war no no okay so then um, there are people for that okay i understand uh you stated earlier that you share responsibility for the crimes of mpfl in your previous statement when we yes, you were asked okay because so uh, our am, records our records show I, I, that over 50 I, I, oh sorry i am a part of mpfl okay. originally i was trained by mpfl we came to Liberia and fought. Then why would I say I'm not part of MPFL? Mm -hmm. Whether directly or indirectly. I understand. But then uh, I am sorry for MPFL, what it did. Okay, thank you. Well, I was just about to say that our records show that over 50 massacres were committed by MPFL directly involving over 5,000 innocent people. Not to mention the raping, the looting, the property damage, the forced labor, the forced displacement, the economic crimes, etc. As former president of Liberia, who inherited uh, authority from President Charles Taylor himself, who himself had been removed beyond the control of the TRC now, uh, who, in your opinion, should be bearing the blunt of this responsibility? Meaning, who are the high commanders of the MPFL who should share this responsibility with you, since it was the MPFL that created this undisciplined 100,000 plus uh, uncontrollable military force that destroyed our country between 1990 and 2003. Well, well, if, if you understand the structure of MPFL, you cannot blame a man, as I told you, the connections. Till I is living, I became president now that I have taken over MPFL. Mm -hmm. I became president of the Republic of Liberia. And there was no more war when I became president of this country. When I became president, I disarmed voluntarily. There was no war. And up to now, there's no war. So the Protella was here when the war had been fought. And he is living. He organized the war. So yeah, you, you, but, cannot, but, you cannot say because Tiller is not here. And because of, I became president. I didn't become president for war. I yeah, became no. president for the people of this country, by the legislature of this country. Well, no, what I'm trying to say, sir, is mm. that um, Mr. Taylor now has already been taken to the Hague for yeah. crimes in Syria. Yes. So for the details of Liberia's crimes, that will have to be a future date for him. But yet, as a commission, we're responsible for accountability of what took place during the time from 1979 to 2003. And you are historically the number two man that should be able to provide us information from, for that, two can months. Help, that can help us in resolving this problem. Exactly. So I just wanted to get you an uh, opportunity exactly. to share with us, because as we say, in immunity comes from sharing truthfully and honestly exactly. with the commission. If you don't, then there's no protection. So here we are now at a deadlock. I mean, do you have any names you can give us that should share this responsibility of the MPFL um, machinery with you? But what, what I would do, it takes time. That I would tell you, even some of these people are dead. I have documents that if you want to send, I will send the documents to you. Okay. But I would not sit here after four or five years, I mean, 20 years almost, and say, the men name was Peter. De and I have documents that who will even die in the war. Who, who were executed, who die, And I have to work on that and send it over to you. Okay, we appreciate that. So yeah. That's all. I'll but I will sit here we'll because I cannot remember that. directly who was who, who did what. 
It okay. takes time that I will sit down and tell you who was commander of this, who was commander of that. Okay. You see, then no, you will get a clear picture of that. I respect that. Thank yeah, you. Good. We will have somebody liaison with yes, you yes. on that. Uh, uh, the final area is, um, well, again, let me see. Okay, let me jump to one other point. The Ulimbo issue, uh, just for clarity, it seems somewhere in one of your testimonies you mentioned about the fact that even after the disarmament and the disengagement of the Ulimbo JNK officially, they lingered on in the background in the bushes and were giving you all a hard time in some, in some form. And that eventually they could have been the ones that transformed themselves into the new structure called Lerd and Model. One coming from the Ulimbo J ring and the other coming from Ulimbo K. Would you like to share light on this for us, please? Yes, I bet what happened. The people, the same uh, Ulimbo, the same law. Law is no different from Ulimbo K and Ulimbo J. Okay. And then. So it was like the, the old enemies still following the system. Yes, exactly. So I was wondering, I mean, were they, did they feel that you were not doing enough, in essence, to bring justice after you have been given a legal mandate to lead the country, especially deaths like Sam Doki and other people who just died mysteriously under a legitimate government protective environment? So why would they come up like that? In your personal opinion, I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I did, I did. Mm -hmm. I did a call the warring fashion to lay down their arms. No, that was afterwards. But I mean, in your opinion, from 1997, to the time you did, which was 2003. 1997, that, that was President Taylor president. Yeah, I but dare talk about the war. It's oh, not my I business. So. It's just my that God. he was such yeah. an all-powerful president. Yeah, we'll talk Nobody about 2003 anything. when our right. president, okay. Okay, yeah. thank you again. Yeah. That's all. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. Before I start, I want to clarify what I understood you properly. Did you say you would make a listing of the different uh, command structure of the different MPFL units? Yeah, there was structure. There were different command structure. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they have different units. Okay. Under the uh, Zed Dimension Guard Unit, yeah. Okay. And you say you take your time and yeah. give as much. Okay. Yeah, I can give you the whole list. Eh? The okay. different units, uh, Tellery, Jungle Fire, and uh, Wagis, okay. and then the, the names the of the commander, the that I, Marine, then the names I can remember yeah. to be the commanders. I will have to turn, furnish you with the whole details. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Uh, I want to just go back a little. You said you joined the MPFL in 1985? Yeah, 85. No, I joined, I left Liberia in 1985. You left Liberia in 1985. Yes. Okay, because you spent one year in training in Libya, and then you met Mr. Taylor. Yeah, I, I we, we spent some time in La Côte d'Ivoire. We were in uh, La Côte d'Ivoire, to be precise, in a town in the Danane region called Benwe. You and mentioned that's where we were. Yeah. And uh, later when Godfather came, and in 1986, September that when we left the first 22 men to go to Libya and we went through Wagadugu and on to When African men approached you, he spoke to you about former President Taylor, right? Yes, yes. Did he speak of any other persons or structure that was involved with the MPF or he just started and ended with uh, Charles Taylor? He started and ended with Charles Taylor. He said that uh, Charles Taylor was in Ghana in jail, but the wife of uh, Charles Tiller, Agnes Tiller, was with him in Wagadugu, and uh, we should go on to Wagadugu and sit down there and we have a better plan in Wagadugu. And at that time, we, we were collecting, you know, different friends from, from the different villages uh, around Danane. And we were only 22 that were agreed to go at that time, okay. making us a first group to leave, to okay. go to train in Libya. When you met Mr. Taylor and he tried to convince all of you that this movement was necessary, yeah. did he speak of how the MPF was getting support and whether there were other people who were political leaders of the movement? No, he did not say that in detail. 
he did was talking about himself himself he talked much about himself he had tried to uh, put his uh, fighting force together because of our brother Kuyongpa died and we are coming into the revenge of Kuyongpa and his wife is from Nimba he almost a part of us uh, he has a girl woman and uh, He's like our father. Moses Tuopu was the Secretary General of the MPFL. No. Who was? Uh, we, we never had a Secretary General. The, the way uh, the place the thing was founded, there were a lot of people, you know, wanted to join MPFL. And, and what happens, uh, President Taylor had blanketed MPFL in a sense that a lot of people who want to come in and uh, there was a meeting held in fact in Wagadugu, which I didn't attend, I was in Libya. And I heard about rumors that other people came in like, like, uh, like uh, Harry Nguyen. Other people wanted to, to be part of this and wanted to know who would be the head of this organization. And Taylor said, no, he's not naming anybody. He is the owner of all this organization. Until we can reach Morovia and he has taken power, then we will know who will be the head. That why everybody kept away. People who intended to come and assist us kept away. According to Romans, you know, that other people wanted to be part of this organization. But our chief said he first. And he lost. Yeah. But can you remember that uh, Moses Duopu came, first he made an announcement that Taylor was not the head of the MPFL, but then he returned to Greater Liberia and then he got killed? No. You don't what? remember that? No. You see, Moses Duopu, what I know of Moses Duopu, what, what I was told is that Moses Duopu came to... Uh, Ball play in the training camp, and he was arrested upon the order of Taylor that uh, he had he told people in Nigeria that he was part of the National Patriotic Front of Liberia, and uh, Taylor did not like that. He said, "Why can you go out there in the name of this organization, which you are not?" Okay. And that had an investigation started, and he got killed with his brother and some friends that came in with him. So in the MPFL, Mr. Tita was the number one person? Number one. I said that here, and when the commissioner was asking, you don't play with the MPFL. So He's the sole so owner of the National Patriotic Front of Liberia. Who was the number two? The, 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 the number two were, 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 were appointed by him. Who was and the number two? We are submitted to him. So who was the number two? Oh. Who was in the MPFL? Oh my God. It was difficult to say, like why you were asking me to say the vice president should be the number two. When Ina was living, Ina was also questioned. Why are you communicating with relatives in America? Then that night I was in a meeting and Ina Dogola decided to resign. None of us communicate with people in America. You do some letter to people in America without the concern of the commander in chief of the MPFL, which is Charles Taylor. Okay. So he controls nearly everything in MPFL. So there was no number two actually in the No MPFL. number two actually to say, this is a man we will go to in time of trouble and something happens, we will go to appeal to this person, no. Okay, so um, up to about 156 persons were trained in total in Libya. Right. Is it that 156 that constitute what we call special forces? Or it was a different group or a that is, That's the same people. That's the same people. Yeah, and there was... There were 156, and um, and I'm coming. Uh, in the training, 79 died in combat. 
When you say died in combat. They died, die in the process. Oh, in the process. Uh, in the process. Some die by execution. Some die by, by fighting. But uh, the number is 79 that died. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'll furnish you with the full uh, detail of the names. Okay. Who died, who were executed, and all of that. We discussed a lot about a number of figures, prominent Nima citizens and other librarians who died during that process. Do you remember anything about the late Patrick Beadle? Yes. Well, I remember Patrick Beadle. I mean, it's from Tapeta, and I'm from Tapeta. So when these are people are very close to me, Patrick Beadle was killed here in Mount Barclay by one son, Lato. The Lato fellow I mentioned. I was in Banga. I've just returned from Kipama sitting with, with, with President Taylor when son Lato brought a recording, a tape recording from Patrick Bido and said, a Chija Patrick Bido recording. He said, but where is the man? He said, oh, the boy killed a man yesterday. So Taylor got hungry. He said, man, like Patrick Bido, we should use this man in our organization. We just, just grab everybody, just killing them. Daddy was very angry with, with San Lato. I don't know why he did with San Lato. And myself felt very bad knowing Padre Bido to be a cousin of mine, and we are all from Tapeta. He was killed by MPFL forces. So, what was on this recording that he played for? What was this recording of. Um Mr. Patrick Bidu that I, that did, I did not even listen. Oh, you didn't hear it. Yeah, I didn't listen. He tell us I didn't say, well, I want, why would I do a recording after killing this good man? Uh, but I don't know, maybe tell him I knew this fellow because he tells some good things about him. He said, oh, Patrick Bidu, what about killing man for? What's about Moses Washington? You have any idea? No, I don't know about Moses Washington. You don't know Washington. Moses Washington? I don't know about Wendell Washington. Can you tell us who replaced you in Libya as ambassador? Yeah, it was a Gambian. A called, Gambian? A Gambian called Yen Smack. A former bodyguard to uh, President Taylor. He replaced you as ambassador? As ambassador, yeah. And he's a Gambian national? Gambian national. Can we talk a little bit about ATU and the Batala base? If you know why was ATU necessary? Why were they so infamous? And there's a lot of things like uh, massive violations that went on at ATU, Batala base. Can you say anything? I, I, I wouldn't say, John, because ATU were organized solely by the, by the, the commander in chief. And his son was was uh, the, uh, a full commander of uh, ATU. So ATU was, was not an, uh, not an uh, organization to temper with. They were very powerful. And they could also report to the commander in chief. So with their function, even you have president or vice president, you, you dare to go into their operation because they are very, very powerful. Was Benjamin Yeating, oh, I will answer that, he said he was doing laundry in Libya during your training. Yeah, yeah. After all we have said and heard about him and what you have said, can you say he was more powerful than you in this MPF yeah. establishment? Exactly. He became so powerful myself. Uh, as I said earlier, I could even salute Benjamin Yeating because he was too close to the president and, uh, and coming to Benjamin Yetin's house, he has no regard for anybody. Okay, Honorable Blatt, thank you very much for coming to the commission and giving us your testimony as you have provided today. We also thank you for the responses to our questions. We know this is our first public engagement and this may not be the last as you have made yourself available to work further with the commission 
to provide all the information that we may need that you exactly, cannot exactly, outrightly provide. Exactly, exactly. So we thank you very much for coming, Honorable Bly, and if you have anything finally to say to the Commission and the people of Liberia, this is the time to do so. Well, Chairman, I would say uh, thank you very much also for inviting me here at the TRC. And uh, the other thing I would be proud to say is that um, to the Liberian people, whether directly or indirectly, anything that has been done by the National Patriotic Front of Liberia, I'm a part of whatsoever because I've had a very high position and some was newly you know done and that I can be witness of and some was done in my absence and with all of that I am a part of National Patriotic Front of Liberia. So that I will appeal to the people of Liberia to forgive me because as I was telling the commission I'm a Christian and we were dragged into this thing because of what has happened to us. And we had people coming into this organization with different intentions. And now that I have reached this point, and uh, I'm very sorry, but uh, I'm part of the National Patriotic Party of Liberia. So I will say to the Liberian people, I will give support to this commission and I will come back if there's, there's need that I come back for any questioning. I'm available, I'm not leaving the country. And I was only afraid when uh, I was questioned in the Hague, in the Hague that took me to, to court. But now that I'm clear with this commission that uh, I'm not going to court for what I say here or oh, any answer, any question that I answer here. So I'm very grateful to you for that. And I thank you very much for the day spent with you. Thank you very much, Honorable yeah. Blair. Yeah. You may kind of leave. But before that, we want to assure you again, there will be no uh, court action resulting from your testimony here. Just in case there is any, the TRS will make that representation. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, Chairman. Yeah.